All right, this is part one of a test on uh, rational expressions, rational equations. We're going to add them, subtract them, multiply them, divide them, do equations, inequalities, simplify them. Anything you can do with uh, fractions that are made out of polynomials, we're going to graph them. Uh, whatever you want to do, that's what we're going to do. So simplifying. It's all about factoring, really. So we have x minus 4. This is the difference of two squares. So you know we're talking about x plus 4, x minus 4. Anything I highlight right now is going to be canceling out. So the x minus 4 is definitely going to cancel out right now. Um, now, that's going to leave x minus 4. Uh, I'm sorry, x plus 4. Now, a lot of kids w would want to just put that but it's in the denominator, so what we have to do is put 1 over x plus 4. So that's what I should see on the line, 1 over x plus 4. All right, problem number 2. Whoa. Okay. Um, factoring is about to happen, I bet. So um, x squared is definitely x times x. I'm looking at 15, and I'm thinking 3 times 5 is 15. Inner plus outer equals middle, but um, positive 3, positive 5, that makes positive 8. So kabam! Um, then we have the lower one. So x squared, again, can only be x times x. When you look at 21, uh, you know, you're thinking 3 times 7. I know it. You know it. Um, positive 3, negative 7 would make the negative 4. So this is looking good. But look at what we have here. Um, the, the x plus 3 and the x plus 3, they cancel out. So that leaves x plus 5 over x minus 7. And right about now, you're feeling like a genius. Am I right? I'm almost always right. You're thinking, this is easy. I can do this. Piece of cake. All right, let's hold on to that feeling. Don't stop believing. Hold on to that feeling. Okay, so perform the indicated operation. Simplify completely. Okay, we're doing multiplication. Um, but if you see something that factors, you should do that. Agreed? Uh, okay, so x squared minus 25, that's x plus 5, x minus 5. So that's 9 over x plus 5. Now, anything I highlight right now is about to cancel out. Okay, so the x plus 5 that's high, the x plus 5 that's low, numerator, denominator, it doesn't matter that they're in different fractions, they cancel out. Uh, while we're at it, okay, um, let's divide both of these by 3. 3 goes into itself once, 3 goes into 9 three times. So that leaves us with 3 times x minus 5 with nothing in the denominator. So um, that's going to be the answer. You can either write 3 times x minus 5 or 3x minus 15. Either one will do. OK, when you see division, you know you're going to have to multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to end up inverting this fraction. Um, but in the meantime, please, please don't forget to factor. If there is a GCF, that should be jumping out at you. Um, the following um, have a GCF. This, this, this. All three of those have a GCF. Um, last time we had a quiz, I had all kinds of kids just leaving these as they were. It's not jumping out properly. So um, three times x plus 2. All right, GCF, got to do that. Um, 2 times x minus 3. OK, that's this one. Uh, I am going to go ahead and do this reciprocal right now. So see this yellow? Just to help guide your eye, that yellow is down here now. OK? So I think you can understand what I'm doing. So that we have the 6, and that's going to be x plus 2. All right, I went ahead and did the reciprocal. Notice it's multiplication now. Now this is going to be x plus 3 times x minus 3. Now anything that I highlight now in green is going to cancel out. 
So the x plus 2 and the x plus 2, they're gone. The x minus 3 and the x minus 3, that's gone. Now, while we're at it, let's divide both of these by 3. 3 goes into itself once, 3 goes into 6 twice. So in the denominator, all that's left is 2 times 2. So that's going to be 4 in the denominator. In the numerator, all that's left is x plus 3. So x plus 3 over 4, that's what we're dealing with. Now, this is not a multiplication problem. This is addition. So um, for addition, we need to have like denominators. Um, we still have to factor. Please, 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 please. Uh, GCF. So we have 4x, and uh, I'm going to have 2 times x plus 3. That's an important step. And then I'm going to have 3 over x plus 3. Now I'm going to go for the like denominators. All right, um, I have to do, um, they both have x plus 3, so I'm halfway there. But this one has a 2, so I have to multiply by 2. Anything I do to the denominator, got to do the same thing to the numerator. Now the denominators are the same. So I can now add. So I will have my like denominator of 2 times x plus 3. But in the numerator, I'm going to add this plus this. So that's going to be 4x plus 6. OK, now I'm scanning. I see a GCF happening. Um, so in fact, you know, I sort of look at it like this. Um, it's going to be a little bit warped. But see how all three of these things are divisible by the same thing? These are all divisible by 2. So um, we have to do that. So this is going to give us um, 2x plus 3 over x plus 3. Okay, so this is the final answer right here. All right, 2x plus 3 over x plus 3. Okay, another way to think about it, if you don't like the whole heart thing that I do when I see a GCF, a triple GCF, boy, I don't know what happened with that big jump there. Um, Another way to look at it is, I could just simply uh, do the GCF, okay? So if I did the GCF right now, go. Wow, technical difficulties. Okay, I could pull out that 2, and that would leave um, 2x plus 3, right? And then I've got 2 and the x plus 3. But then obviously these 2s would just cancel out. So that's another way of looking at how I got that. Okay, continuing with the uh, whatever operation. Now, um, first of all, look, you see uh, subtraction. Um, this is a big mistake that my students have struggled with, um, how to deal with the subtraction. I have recommended to them that they change this to plus a negative, whatever it is, um, to help them remember to distribute the negative. Um, you don't have to do that, but I find it to be helpful. Um, I don't see any GCF anywhere, so we're going to have to just jump in with the craziness of making like denominators. So, um, you know, since there's no GCF or anything, then we'll have to deal with this whole thing. So, um, the right side has a 4x plus 3, so I'm just plain going to have to do a 4x plus 3. I don't see any way around it. And uh, you have to do the same thing in the numerator, 4x plus 3. Um, the left side has a 7x minus 4, so I'm going to have to do a 7x minus 4 in the numerator and the denominator. I don't see any way around that either. Um, so, there's some foiling that's about to happen. So, look, in the denominator, um, I'm going to use the common denominator. We have 4x plus 3 times 7x minus 4. Got that. Um, but here, got to do a little distributive property. So, 
um, we have um, 4x times 3x, that's 12x squared. 4x times 10, that's 40x. 3 times 3x, three that's 9x. 3 times 10, that's 30. Meanwhile, distributing ne So now it's time to distribute the uh, negative x. So when I do that, I'm going to have negative 7x squared plus 4x. All right, so now it's time to combine like terms. Looking for the highest degrees first. So we will have 12x squared and a negative 7x squared. All right, so of course that is 5x squared. All right, now let's do the x terms. Um, well, we have 40 and 9. So far, that's 49x uh, plus another 4x. So that's 53x. And that just leaves a uh, sad and lonely plus 30. All right, and that is all over this denominator still. 4x plus 3 times 7x minus 4. Now, we could try to factor this, but uh, spoiler alert, it does not factor. So this is the final answer. All right, we're going to solve this system of equations now, and we're going to be sure to write our answers as an ordered pair, like x comma y. So um, the first step, though, is to set these uh, equal to each other. So if I do that, then what I'm dealing with is I've got, um, I've got 5x over x minus 1 minus 2. And that's equal to 14 over now, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and factor this now. x squared minus 1 is x plus 1 times x minus 1. Okay, that hopefully is jumping out at you. That's the difference of two squares. So I have this system of equations. Now, I'm going to go ahead and begin to solve this um, like I would any other equation. So if I'm solving equations, the thing to do is to multiply by whatever you see in the denominator, the factors. So I see two different factors in the denominator. I see this x minus 1 in two places and an x plus 1. So I'm going to multiply by both of those, x plus 1, x minus 1. You have to do the same thing to every term, though. So x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 1, x minus 1. So everything that I highlight in green is canceling out. So x minus 1 cancels out. Nothing cancels out here. All of this cancels out. Gone. OK. Now, um, x plus 1, x minus 1. Let's remember that that came from x squared minus 1. So actually, for this right here, nothing canceled or anything. So instead of writing this as x plus 1 it would be more convenient to write it as x squared minus 1 like it was before alright but you get it x squared minus 1 that's the same thing as the x plus 1 x minus 1 that I had before but uh, two terms and just distributing is a lot easier you know uh, than dealing with what I had before okay anyway so um, now I am going to go ahead and distribute everything. Now, when I distribute this uh, 2, I'm not going to distribute a 2. This is negative 2. Please focus on that. I'm distributing a negative 2 when I do this. So what I'm going to have is, so 5x times x, that's going to be 5x squared. 5x times 1, so that'll be 5x. Now, negative 2 times x squared. That's negative 2x squared. 
negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. And that's equal to 14. Now, like terms, 5x squared minus 2x squared, that's 3x squared. Okay, that was it. So I've got plus 5x plus 2 is equal to 14. Let's subtract. So that's 3x squared plus 5x minus 12. All right, let's see if this factors. If it doesn't factor, we will have to use the quadratic formula. But let's try factoring first. OK, 3x squared is 3x times x. 12. 12 is either 3 times 4, 2 times 6, or 1 times 12. Well, let's start with 3 times 4. Can't put the 3 here. That would make a common factor. That's not going to happen. So let's try 4 and 3. Inner plus outer equals middle. Inner, I have 4x. Outer, I have 9x. Oh, this is looking promising. All right. If I have a negative 4 and a positive 9, that makes positive 5. So negative 4 and uh, positive 9 would happen if I do this. And a negative times positive is a negative. So just that quickly, uh, we factored it. So that's great. Um, setting these equal to 0, you know, 3x minus 4 equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0. All right, um, that's 3x equals 4. If I add 4 to both sides, um, x equals 4 over 3 if I divide both sides by 3. And x equals negative 3. Okay, I'm looking for extraneous values while I'm doing this. X cannot equal um, X cannot equal one, and X cannot equal negative one. But uh, I don't see a problem here. So um, I have these two X values, um, but I need the Y values that go with them. All right, ordered pairs. So let's see, so I have 4 over 3 and I have negative 3. All right, so I have 4 over 3 and I have negative 3. So it's 4 over 3 comma something. And I have negative 3 comma something, all right? These are x values. I need to find the y values that go with them. So how will I get the y values? I need to pick one of these equations. Okay, I'm going to pick the second one. No particular reason. It just seems a little simpler to me. So I'm going to put that into my calculator. So 14 over x squared minus 1. Okay. So um, let's see. Again, we were looking for these two values. Let's start with negative 3. So I will literally just type in negative 3 for the start value. And I see I have a y value of 7 fourths. So there you go, 7 fourths. And uh, how about the x value, 4 over 3? Well, to get to that, I hit the table button again, uh, where it says start. And I will just type 4 over 3. Is that what I wanted? Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's 18. So 4 over 3, comma, 18. So these are the answers. We have to, don't just write the x values. Remember that we got these x values, OK, of 4 over 3 and negative 3. But those are just x values that we got. We have to pair them with y values using the equation. All right, um, let's take a quick peek at desmos.com to see what this looks like on a graphing calculator. So let's see, we have 5x over x minus 1. OK, so I have 5x. Well, I guess I should. Hold on. I'm going to hit uh, the division sign first, so go into fraction mode. So I have 5x over x minus 1. 
Okay, but then we have um, minus 2, so um, minus 2. So that's one equation. Now, the, and you can see the graph forming right there. Uh, the other equation is 14 over x squared minus 1. So again, fraction mode. So I go 14 over x squared minus 1. Okay, and we're looking for the intersections of these two points. Okay, um, and you can drag this a little bit. So I see one intersection right here. That's at negative 3 and 1.75. So um, that is this one, okay? Negative 3, and then guess what 7 over 4 is? one point seven five okay so that's what we got right there and there should be another intersection though at uh, four over three comma eighteen now before we even see it four divided by three is one point three you know one point three three depending on where you round it to okay so um, that's going to be off camera here. Let's see if I can uh, scroll. So I've scrolled and here you can see 1.333 comma 18 just like we thought. And here's just a quick overview of what we just saw with the two intersections here and here. Alright, um, I think I'm going to stop this video here. That's enough information for one video. Um, we made it through number seven. There's a lot more to come, but we will pick that up on the next video.